Hi guys, this is Sadek from Godwin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest the Clover Project ROM based on Android 15 onto your Nothing Phone 2. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android SDK platform tools from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done so in C drive. And as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Just a second. Moving on, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. The debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now enable both the toggles. For that, you have to go to the settings menu, then go to about phone, nothing OS and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once that happens, go back, again go back, go to system and you should now see developer options, go there, enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone, tap on OK. You might get one more prompt, in that prompt, tap on Allow. And with this, the debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So go to the address bar of Platform Tools, type in CMD and hit Enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside the Platform Tools directory as you could see. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting an ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on Revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB fixes and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, you will now have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do note that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done. In short, just boot your phone to the fastboot mode and use the fastboot flashing unlock command. You will then get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. With this, the bootloader will be unlocked and you will be taken to the OS. So make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. Moving on, you could now get hold of the latest ROM zip file from here. Apart from the ROM file, you also need to download the super empty IMG file. This is required to wipe the support partition. If you don't do so, then you will get the error applying update 7 in the Orange Fox recovery. So please download the super empty IMG file as well. And once you've got both the file, let's transfer the file inside the platform tools directory. So this is the ROM zip file. First off, let's transfer that. And along the following lines, let's transfer the super empty IMG file as well. Once you have transferred both the files, let's move ahead. So for the ease of convenience, it's also recommended to rename the ROM file to something shorter. So for instance, let's rename the ROM file to ROM.zip and it will be easier to type in the CMD window. Anyways, let's just wait for that to complete and move ahead with the next step. Now you have to wait, boot your phone to the fast boot mode. For that, just type in ADB reboot bootloader and hit enter. And your phone should not reboot into fast boot mode. This will only take a few seconds, so let's just wait for that to happen. And then we'll move ahead with the next step. So let's just wait and then we will have to verify the fastboot connection as well. So type in fastboot devices and make sure that you are getting an ID. So type in fastboot devices and hit enter. If you are not getting any ID, then you'll have to install the fastboot drivers onto your PC as well. Regarding that, we have made a separate guide and a video. This is the code as you could see, which I am getting. If you're not getting, then this is the link. Go to this link and install the drivers onto your PC. Once you've installed the drivers, right click on the Windows icon and choose Device Manager, then expand the Android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown here as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to Fastboot signify that your PC is able to read the phone in Fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead. So let's now start off with the flashing process. In this regard, you will first off have to wipe the super partition. So simply copy this entire command and paste it in the CMD window. So let's do that. Hit enter. The super partition has now been wiped. And now we may flash the Orange Fox recovery and, the, and then the ROM file as well. So for the Orange Fox, we are, have made a video on the same as well. You could refer to that video. But I'll show you once again how to get this job done. So we are done with the first step, the second step, and the third step. All are done. The fourth step is here. So get hold of the recovery file from this link and extract them onto your PC, you will get four files. Let me show you the four files which I am talking about. These are the four files. So copy the recovery IMG file from the zip file and transfer it inside the platform tools directory. And now let's flash the recovery file onto our phone. So type in fastboot flash partition name which is recovery, file name which is recovery dot IMG and the recovery will now be flashed onto your phone in a few seconds. Once that is done, type in fastboot reboot recovery and your phone should now reboot into the newly flash or Fox recovery. The first boot I will take up some time. This is completely normal and you may also simply copy paste all the command from a guide. This is the command to flash the recovery and this is the command to reboot to recovery. 
So give it a few more seconds and your phone should now reboot into the newly flashed Orange Fox recovery. And once it's in the recovery mode, you will have to then do a format data first and foremost, which will wipe off all the data from your phone. So make sure that you have taken a backup beforehand. If that's all well and good, then let's start off with the ROM flashing and first do a format data. So you will have to go to the wipe section, format data, type in yes and hit the orange check mark. The formatting is now complete. After that, go back, go to menu, reboot and choose recovery. This will remount the data partition and your, and your phone should now be shown on your PC. Once that happens, you could then easily transfer the ROM zip file via the USB mount option. But in some cases, your phone might not be shown on the PC. And in other cases, even though your phone might be shown here, but you might not be able to access the storage. So let's first see if we are facing any of these two issues or not. So in my case, up until now, my phone is not being shown here. Give it a few more seconds and the phone should now appear, I suppose. So my phone is here, but, but I suppose there is some issue. So I cannot access the storage. So in such cases, you could also use the ADB push command to get the job done. Simply type in ADB push file name, which is rom.zip forward slash space the location on your phone, which is SD card and hit enter. So first off, let me rename the file to something to rom.zip. That is why we had done the rename so that it is easier to type in the CMD window and now hit enter. The file will now be transferred onto your phone. Just make sure to transfer the ROM zip file inside the platform tools directory. And this is the location apart from SD card. You may also use the data or the temp directory, but it's recommended to stay with the SD card. Then you may also use a USB OTG device if you have or the ADB push command, but please never use the ADB side load. The side loading should only be used with an USB recovery like Linux OS or C Android, but the side loading should never be used with the TWRP or Orange Fox. In both of these recovery, you will only have to use the install option. So with that said, the file is being transferred and will take a few more seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. So guys, the file has not been transferred. Let's verify the same. As you could see, this is the file. Select it and swipe to flash. The flashing will now start and will take up to around 6 to 8 minutes. So let's just wait for that to complete. So guys, the flashing is now complete. Now, if you want to flash any other zip file, then first do a reboot recovery and then flash the required file. Once that is done, you will now have to once again do a format data just to be on a safer side. So let's do that as well. And once the formatting is complete, your last course of action is the main part. So as you could see, the flashing of the file has been done in the inactive slot. So in my case, the active slot is slot A and the ROM has been flashed to the slot B. So now I'll have to make a switch to the inactive slot, which in my case is slot B. So again, you will have to do that as well in your case too. So it does not matter which is the inactive slot A or B. You just have to make a switch to the inactive slot. So go to menu reboot and tap on switch to slot B or slot A in your case, which is ever is the inactive slot and you will get the changing boot slot complete. When that is done, tap on reboot system. You will get a warning, no OS installed. It's a false error message. Just swipe to reboot and your phone will now reboot to the newly flashed OS. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time. That is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, that will not be the case. With that said, let's wait for the boot animation or the boot logo to appear, either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully and it should take up to around eight to 10 seconds for the boot animation to appear. After which you will have a look at the ROM features as well. And this is the new boot animation, which we see in the Google Pixel 9 series. And it's there inside this ROM. I haven't used this ROM till now. This is the first time I'm flashing this ROM in any phone whatsoever. So let's see what it has to offer. So let's set up the ROM for As of now, I'm skipping the initial setup process. If you want, you may connect your phone to the Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the data. But for now, I'm skipping all that stuff just to speed up the process. I am simply accepting all the terms and condition and that's just about it. So with this, we are now inside the ROM and you have all the required pre-installed Google apps. It's a GS build of the ROM. And I don't know why only four apps are installed over here as well. There are only four apps. I guess there should be space for more, but this is the Android 15 based ROM. So let's have a look at some of the Android 15 features. So this is the revamped settings menu, which is there. The power menu in the QS tiles is also there. The option to screen record a particular app is also there. So just tap on next and then you could record the, do the recording in just one app. As soon as you make a switch to any other app, the recording will pause and only resume once you are back to that app. Apart from that, the 
back gesture, the new back gesture is also there, which will give you a sneak peek of what is behind the menu. Then the new volume panel, let's have a look. This is also there. You may also add a new device from here and access the audio settings from this page. Change the ringtones. There are quite a lot of ringtones as you could see across various domains that you could choose from. Same goes for the notification sound, alarm sound as well. Screenshot sound, charging sound, you could all tweak it from here. Then the private space is also one of the Android 15 features. So this should be, I guess, over here. Okay, private space should be in the security and privacy. So let's, okay, this should be here. First of all, you have to set up a screen lock. Anyone will do. And after that, you could only set up a private space. So let's set up a private space. You may use the same lock screen or choose a new lock pattern for the private space. It's recommended to choose a new lock. But for the ease of convenience, I'm using the, uh, the same lock and the private space is now set up and you could now easily add the required apps from here and access them as one required. You even have the option to hide the private space from the app drawer. Simply go to the settings menu and hide the private space. Tap on got it. Now go back again, go back and lock it. And now it's gone from here as well. So these are the Android 15 features. Let's see whether the app ROM has something unique to offer or not. So go to system and the glyph interface is the same which you get in the nothing OS. And these are the various gestures, tap to check phone, left to check phone, long press on the fingerprint. So it's all the same UI which you get in AOSP ROM. So it seems to be offering a clean stock UI experience with no additional bloatware or customization. So it's completely different from the the likes of Sierra Droid or Evolution X. With that said, the device extras Okay, only two features are there. So it is completely different and it does not have the customization that you get in Rising OS, Sierra Droid or Evolution X. With that said, the ROM is very fast and smooth to use. During my initial usage, it's quite great and there is no customization. But if you are one of those who likes the Lineage OS, then this should be your go-to choice as well. It definitely deserves your attention. Then if you go to the wallpaper section from here, you may change the lock screen clock style. And you may change the color as well. The theme will change accordingly. As you could see, then you may go here and change any other color from here. So it's between the light and dark theme from here. For now, let's stick with the default theme. And you may change the wallpaper. So it has quite a few wallpapers inbuilt, which is quite great to see. These all looks quite nice. Maybe they are AI generated, but still they look quite nice. As you could see over here. Then apart from that, this is the OnePlus OK. So this brings back so many memories. These are from the official OnePlus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I guess. Some of them are from the 6, 7 series as well. And this is from the Nord series, I'm quite sure. And this is, I guess, 6 series, I suppose. Well, I haven't seen the OnePlus wallpapers in any custom ROM till date. And this is the on-device wallpaper by default, which you will get. Then if you go to the home screen, you have the option to enable theme icons. And as you could see, they are not implemented. You may change the app grid size as well. 5 cross 5. Let's keep it that way. This looks much more promising. And then apart from that, let's have a look at the home settings. The layout. Then you may change the icon pack. If you have any custom icon pack, you may choose from there. In the home screen, you may carry out these tweaks. Swipe to access Google app. This is the Google app which you are talking about. So let me give it a lock. So this UI issue might happen for the first time usage. It will not happen always. So this is the Google app. Currently I am offline and not login. That is why I'm getting this blank screen. If you want, you have the option to turn off this Google app from here as well. And it will no longer be shown here. Likewise, you also have the option to remove the Google search bar from the bottom and both of them will now be gone. The bottom Google search bar in the home screen as well as the app in the Google app, the bottom is gone and likewise you cannot access the Google app as well. For now, I would like to keep both of them because the Google search bar is quite a handy feature. Same goes for the swipe to access Google app. Then let's go back in the app drawer. You have the option to enable the theme icons in the app drawer as well. So let's implement it and then minimize it. You will now have to wait for a few seconds the launcher will undergo a restart and after that the changes will be implemented so let's wait if that does not happen simply lock and unlock the phone and it will now be implemented and as you could see we now have the app theme icon in the app drawer as well this looks quite nice in the recent you have the option to show the ram info as well 
this might again require a system UI restart or simply a lock and unlock of the phone. This is just for the one time delay. And as you could see, this is the RAM usage, the clear all button and the option to take a screenshot. I don't know why someone will take a screenshot from this screen. Anyways, in the miscellaneous, you could enable circle to search. Okay, so let's try it out as well. Hold the bottom bar to search what's on your screen and it's now enabled. Currently I'm offline, but when I go online, it will not work well and good. Just you have to long press on the navigation bar pill and it will bring up the screen. Simply search the required portion and it will do the search. Earlier we used to have Google Lens, but now this is a much handy feature. So guys, it's a clean soft UI experience with no additional customization. You will get all the required AOSP features and tweaks and this ROM looks quite promising. So with that in mind, I round up this video. If you have any queries with regard to any of the steps, do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.